Hello everyone, welcome back. Let us look into OIC scope in this video. So I just created one schedule orchestration integration. And let us drag and drop the scope. So what is scope? We can manage group of actions and it can have its own exception handler so that is in simple terms and you know using scope we can handle exceptions so this is a scope and here you can see fault handler means here we can handle the exceptions and this arrow right so here you can perform all your actions when you want to trigger any third party application or you want to get the data from any third party application or you want to you know write some loops and all you can do whatever you want inside the scope. If any error occurs, that will throw an exception and it goes to the fault handler. If you want to handle the exception or if you want to send any email notification, you can write your code inside default handler. So let's say some exception happened and you want to send an email notification here, you can implement that. Okay, so this is the beauty of scope. Let us look into the variables. I mean, how the variables get affected with the scope. And also, I'll explain, you know, when, when it comes to loop, what all we need to consider. And also, I'll just give you one real-time example. And then we can end this video. Okay, so now, we just dragged and dropped one scope and let us create a variable. Before the scope, I'm creating a variable. Initialize variables, create. So let me give simple name, var underscore a. And the value, test hyphen a okay so now i have created one variable outside now let us create one variable inside the scope underscore b i'm just giving the same like first you will just iphone b okay and let us also update variable a here so where oh, we don't need to go in this way. So let me just click on this drop down. You can see the variable. See. Let us just update the value. Yeah, this is already given. So it's just I'm adding updated. Validate it and close it. Okay. So now we have created one variable outside the score. Here, where underscore A. And here we have created where underscore B variable and also we have updated where underscore A. Okay. So let me just try to access these outside the score means after the execution, let's say here. Log details. Okay. So here, if you 
try to you know drag and drop the variables you need to search for the variables at the left side and here you can only see variable a because variable b is created inside the score let me just drag this one see you cannot find the variable b here you can only see variable a But if you drag and drop logger inside the scoop, you can see both the variables. So if you drag, just drag down, you can see both the variables. So this is what I want to say. So just let me drag one variable, validate it. And close it. See here, before the scope, you have created a variable and that is available inside the scope. But the variable that you have created inside the scope is not available at the outside of the scope. Okay, this is one, one of the, you know, this is very important that we should be aware of when we are building an integration. Okay. And let us see what all we can access inside the flaw fault handler. Okay. Log details three and click on create. I'm just going to edit and see here. You can only access outside the scope variable means variable A. You cannot access variable B here. Okay. So this is also very important. So when you want to use a variable throughout the integration, the best practice is create variables, it means initialize the variables, the beginning of integration, and you can use all over the integration. Okay. So that is one thing related to variables and then exception handling. So let's say execution is happened and you know, due to some issues, execution got failed at initialize variable two. At this place, it got failed. It got errored out. So what happens? We know that it goes to the file handler and you know whatever we write there, let's say send an email notification that will be executed. So that is clear. But what next? After that, what it will execute? Means it will go to this logger. It will not execute this. It will directly go to this logger because we are handling the exception. So execution will continue. But from here, means outside the scope. After the scope, it will continue to execute. So again, I'm repeating. So some error occurred here. So it will not execute this log details too. It will directly go to the fault handler and we are handling the exception there. And then after that, it will come to log details. It will not execute this one. So this is, we need to understand regarding the scope. And then loop. Loop means, so let me just minimize this and let me just drag one loop. Just loop. I'm just taking it. Yes. An example, example, uh, test. close it. Okay, so now let me just send this to inside loop. Okay, so now what happens? So let's say 
this loop i mean you know based on our input this needs to run for five times so loop will repeat for five times but in the third execution in the third loop exception occurred at the variables level means initialize variable 2 here some exception happened so what happened next so that means error occurred at the loop 3 means it will just skip the loop 3 and it will continue with the loop 4 so loop 1 is executed 2 is executed 3 got some exception so it will skip it and then 4 will continue and 5 will continue and then it goes to log details okay so we should be you know uh, having a clear understanding of this so overall let me give you one example best example so we have a requirement where we we need to get bulk data from the database and then we need to send the data to Oracle. In each row, we need to read each row and uh, you know each separate row we need to execute and then send the data to Oracle. Okay, so in that case, so let's say we'll be pulling the data from the database where process status is equal to new. So we'll fetch all the records with the status new and we'll process each one of the record. And then here we'll be updating. Once it is posted to Oracle, we'll update that process status to success. And then in fault handler, we'll update that if something happened to that record, we'll update that record status to error. So this is how we, you know, in a real time situation, we handle the exceptions. If you want to send an email notification, we'll send it. And we'll also update you know, database table with the error or success. But it will execute all 200 records. It will not stop. Well, let's say, you know, 100th record got failed, but still it will execute uh, 101 until 200 because we are handling the exception. So when you don't handle the exception, it will stop the execution. So this is all about scope. Thank you guys. We'll meet you in the next video.